This tutorial is on the muscles of the posterior abdominal wall. So you've got five muscles that you need to know about here. You've got the quadratus lumborum, you've got the psoas major and minor, you've got the iliacus, and you've got the diaphragm. So the psoas major and minor sit kind of medially, the iliacus is inferiorly, and the diaphragm sits uh, at the top superiorly. And then you've got the quadratus lumborum sitting kind of posteriorly and laterally. So this view that we're looking at here, I've removed the anterior um, abdominal muscles and I've removed the muscles of the back and the spine so we can view these posterior abdominal walls quite nicely. So we'll start off with these medial muscles, the psoas major and minor. So this muscle here, this large muscle, is the psoas major. And you can see its attachment here on the vertebral bodies. So it, it attaches from the vertebral bodies from T12 down to L5. And if I fade away the other muscles, you can see its insertion on the lesser trochanter of the femur. So you can see its origins here. It sits anterolaterally on the vertebral body. So it sits in front of the, the transverse processes on the bodies of uh, vertebrate T12 down to L5 and um, it serves to, it's a hip flexor so it flexes the thigh at the hip joint so it brings the thigh up like this um, and also in the lying position um, if you imagine um, if you imagine this model in the supine position it, the muscle can sort of act in a reverse way so it, it can flex the vertebra so it can, if it can if it's in the supine position the psoas major can contract to bring the vertebra up like this so flexion at the ver so flexion of the vertebral column rather so the psoas minor sits on top of it and this muscle isn't always present in everybody um, but if it is present, it originates on the um, on the bodies of T12 and L1, and it inserts um, on the pectinal line and the iliopubic eminence. So you can see that here. So I've just isolated the muscle, and you can see its origin on the on T12 and L1, and it inserts on the iliopubic eminence and the pectinal line. So the psoas major is innervated by the anterior rami of uh, spinal nerves L1 to L3 and the psoas minor is innervated by the anterior rami or ramus of L1. So the psoas minor um, acts as a weak flexor of the vertebral column. So if I just get rid of these two muscles now we can take a look at the iliacus which sits just a little bit inferior to it. So the iliacus muscle sits in the iliac fossa and it joins the psoas muscle to insert onto the lesser trochanter. So you can see its insertion on the lesser trochanter here. And you can see how it runs through and uh, combines with this the uh, psoas major muscle. So Collectively, the iliacus and the psoas major are referred to as the iliopsoas. So this serves the same function as the psoas major muscle. So it flexes the hip at the thigh joint. So the th the thigh at the hip joint, and it's innervated by the femoral nerve. So you can see how both the distal ends of the iliacus and psoas major pass underneath this ligament, the inguinal ligament to insert onto the less trochanter of the femur. So if we just rotate round to the back we can see the quadratus lumborum muscle which is this muscle here. So if I just fade away the other muscles we'll take a look at its origin and insertion. So you can see here that it has this origin on the iliac crest and it also has an origin on the transverse process of um, lumbar vertebra L5 and it also if I rotate anteriorly you can see this ligament connecting the uh, lumbar vertebra to the 
inside of the uh, ilium. So this is called the iliolumbar ligament and it also originates on this ligament. And it's not shown very clearly on this model but this the quadratus lumborum muscle actually inserts onto the uh, transverse processes of lumbar vertebra L1 to L4 so it inserts here, here, here and here um, as well as the inferior margin of the 12th rib. So this muscle can laterally flex um, the spine and it can also depress uh, the rib. And this muscle is innervated by the anterior rami of T12 and also um, of L1 to L4, spinal nerves T12 and L1 to L4. So right at the top we've got the diaphragm. So the posterior parts of the diaphragm um, contribute to the uh, posterior abdominal wall, the muscular parts of the posterior abdominal wall. So we'll just take a quick look at the diaphragm. So you can see it's got this domed shape and it separates the, the thorax from the abdomen, so the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity and it forms the superior aspect of the abdominal cavity so it lines the inferior thoracic aperture um, and it's attached to the lumbar vertebra by these two sort of legs so these, these two legs are called crura plural or crus singular so this is latin for leg and you've got a right and a left crus um, and if I rotate the model around you can see that there's this central tenderness section and there's a few holes so various structures pass from the thorax into the abdominal cavity via these holes so there's a lot to talk about with the diaphragm but I won't go through through all that I'll do a separate tutorial so it's the posterior parts of the diaphragm that contribute to the posterior abdominal wall, the muscular part of the posterior abdominal wall, um, and the diaphragm is innervated by the phrenic nerve. So those are the five muscles you need to know that make up the posterior abdominal wall. You've got the diaphragm at the top, the posterior parts of the diaphragm, you've got the psoas major and minor, you've got the iliacus, and you've got the quadratus lumborum.